It's no surprise that many of the films on this list take place at home, it's where we've spent the most time this year. For some, it's a sanctuary, but for others, it's a hotbed of terror raring to erupt at any moment. These films run the gamut of emotion, from grief to guilt and tremendous cabin fever. Things we can all relate to, not only this year but always. These offerings include siblings racked with regret, survivors of domestic abuse, and mothers barely keeping it together for their families. But just before things become utterly hopeless, there are the two unlikely friends who decide to face off against the undead. The movies here aren't for the faint of heart, but they all have one thing in common. Grit. Swallow. Everything goes quiet the first time Hunter, Haley Bennett, the meek housewife and Swallow, disturbs her immaculate universe. She holds up a marble like holy sacrament and then eats it. And then she does the same with a thumbtack, and a battery, and more things that weren't meant to be inside a person and that tear her up inside and on their way out. Carl Amira Bella Davis's film is a kind of body horror liberation story in which Hunter's compulsion perversely awakens her to how unwanted the stifling life she has accepted actually is. Bennett, sealed away behind glass in a Hudson Valley house that's like a display case, gives Hunter the dreamy effect of a sleepwalker, but when she becomes pregnant, her pica starts to seem like a disturbing assertion of agency, an unconscious way of reclaiming her own flesh by mistreating it, even as everyone around her starts treating her as merely a means of incubating a fetus. rent a pal Like the rest of us, writer-director John Stevenson couldn't have possibly imagined that his film would be released during an era when all of humanity is awkwardly disconnected and suffering from a supreme loneliness. But with the 90s set Rent a Pal, he chillingly hits on each of those notes with the story of David, Brian Landis Fokins, a lonely man living with his elderly mom. After coming up empty with video dating services, David comes across another tape that offers a similar level of compassion. Rent a Pal. Kind of like Tinder for friends and ultimately just as precarious. Because this friend, named Andy, Will Wheaton, ends up preying on David's weaknesses, he turns him into someone else entirely. It's uncertain whether Stevenson wants us to think that Andy is an active participant in David's demise or, even scarier, that David is already on the edge before Andy enters his life. But either circumstance proves how overwhelmingly terrifying solitude can be. The Invisible Man. In this latest remake of the H.G. Wells classic, from writer-director Lee Wannell, Elizabeth Moss proves once again that few others do unhinge 21st century woman quite like her. Her performance as Cecilia, who's being stalked by her abusive ex and the eponymous villain, is felt so viscerally as we watch her struggle to convince people around her that a man they think no longer exists is actually after her. One examines a universal fear of things unseen, while also pointing to a singular fear among women, not being believed. The Invisible Man is a poignant horror made for our time. The Grudge. Few sounds are as bone chilling as this franchise's signature creak attributed to its longtime villain, a restless female ghost who continues to terrify the living. Writer director Nicholas Pess effectively explores the trauma, horror, and rage derived from masterful original Japanese film Juon in this latest English language adaptation of The Grudge. Recapturing the palpable fury of its scorned phantom, the haunting tale oscillates between the sins of our past and a present determined to repeat itself through the stories of a single mother, Andrea Severo, and an expectant father, John Cho. Alive. Who would have thought that a movie about a zombie outbreak would be so relatable right now? Korean writer-director Ryo Cho terrifically taps into the agony of survival in a world where human connection has been replaced with undead cannibals and weak cell phone signals. Grounding the story is an unlikely hero, a millennial, Ah Yu, stranded alone in his apartment, barely getting by on instant noodles and waning hope. 
the increasingly horrifying circumstances force him to be resourceful and consider his life and the people in it in ways he's never done before, and fight for an uncertain future. Sure, the zombies in Alive are scary AF, and move even scarier, but the dilemma Cho poses will continue to haunt you, you either risk your life by trying to escape your apartment, or you stay inside and wait for the zombies to find you. In other words, how are you really willing to live? Metamorphosis. This is another example of an old horror premise that is successfully revamped for modern audiences. Korean filmmaker Hong Sian Kim takes the classic possession plotline and kicks it up a notch by centering it within the confines of one loving family. With the smoothness of John Carpenter's The Thing. The dread of metamorphosis comes from the heightened anxieties of each relative, the source of evil gliding from one to another as they fruitlessly try to identify then exorcise it. Kim is ultimately interrogating the evil mentality that already exists within a family long before an entity can get to it. This movie will have you looking at your siblings, and especially your parents, sideways. 32 Malasana Street Director Albert Pinto was clearly inspired by the throwback haunted house horror of James Wan's The Conjuring series because 32 Malasana Street is packed to the gills with genuine terror in every corner of its titular residence. Set in 1976 Spain, Pinto introduces us to a family already grappling with emotional wounds of the past and present when they must confront the creepy ghosts that live among them. Pinto, with screenwriters Gemma Arnera. David Aurea, Salvador S. Molina, and Ramon Campos, gets a wee bit bogged down trying to build out a clumsy backstory of one spectre, but he succeeds with a legitimately spooky movie that you may only be able to watch with the lights on. Relic. Sensitively examining mental decay brought on by dementia. Writer-director Natalie Erica James immerses the audience in a familial story that is both devastating and horrifyingly claustrophobic. We meet Edna, Robin Evan, an elderly woman struggling with her grip on reality when her worried daughter, Kay, Emily Mortimer, and granddaughter, Sam, Bella Hethkit, pay her a fateful visit. They are consumed by the frightening deterioration of the house, as well as everyone and everything, in it. James kicks the haunted house genre to a chilling and emotional new level. The Lodge. Grief catalyzes writers-directors Severin Fiala and Veronica France's nightmarish film that centers on two siblings, Leah McHugh and Jeden Martell, who lose their mother and are instantaneously pulled into a new relationship with their dad's mysterious fiancé, Riley Keough. As the trio coops up together at the eponymous residence, more and more frightening and inexplicable things happen that cause both the siblings and their stepmom to be to begin suspecting each other. The Lodge is a completely terrifying film that also leaves you looking at each of the characters a little sideways by its macabre conclusion. The Dark and the Wicked. Writer-director Brian Bettino. The Strangers, returns to scare the living shit out of you in this emotional horror set on a secluded farm in any town, USA. There, we meet Louise, Marin Ireland, and her brother, Michael, Michael Abbott Jr., estranged for who knows how long and reunited under grim circumstances, the impending death of their father, Michael Zagst. Almost immediately, Bettina gives us the sense that something is awry with the film's startling silence, sun for the wind blowing outside. When Louise and Michael begin experiencing increasingly eerie visions, we soon realize that father's death isn't the only one feared. The utterly horrifying The Dark and the Wicked lives up to every word of its title with a story of abandonment and bereavement that is all too resonant today, 